Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Man, it's been just a hot minute since I did a video for you guys. I believe the last one we did just some traditional sketching and warm-ups, and we are going to get to that at some point this week. But today, we're going to do something super spectacularly special. So sit back, grab your cup of coffee, and definitely pay attention. You guys know that I love doing reviews of products that apply themselves to the artistic workflow, whether it be a quick key tablet, a display tablet, a standalone tablet, a peripheral, something that adds to the artistic digital drawing experience or traditional drawing experience. I really don't, um, you know, see uh, myself being a super intense review channel, but at the end of the day, if it does apply to the artistic workflow and it helps you guys in some capacity, I definitely want to do a review. So if you have a product or something along those lines that you think applies to the artistic workflow, don't hesitate to contact me. I would love to see what you have. In the meantime, I received a package in the mail from a company by the name of Artisol, A-R-T-I-S-U-L. They make display tablets and drawing tablets for computers. Very similar to your Wacom, your XP Pen, Huion, and some of those other uh, offerings. SenseLab uh, is another company uh, that has dipped its uh, products into the marketplace. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a simple unboxing because you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of unboxing but it is important that we see how it comes in the mail and if you know those telltale signs that I like to refer to as um, you know uh, uh, consumer um, you know, whenever you get a product, you can definitely tell where they put the money. Um, perception of value, that's the phrase that I was looking for. A lot of times you get a product and the packaging is just really not great and you open the product and the product isn't great. So even if sometimes the packaging isn't fantastic, sometimes the product is spectacular. So I want to make sure and cover all the bases today. Um, in this review. So for those of you who are visiting my channel for the first time, uh, my name is Michael Clarida. I am a illustrator, uh, toy designer, graphic artist, um, primarily uh, in the toy industry and collectibles. Uh, I've been so for about 20 years and uh, I have a lot of experience whenever it comes to understanding what a consumer and a customer uh, uh, you know, wants to experience whenever they buy a new product. So that's why a lot of these companies have been reaching out because, you know, it, it, it takes a keen eye sometimes to explain what the consumer um, is seeing. You know, a lot of times we evaluate a, uh, a feeling with something, um, you know, terrestrial. So you have, whenever you go buy an Apple product, you go in and, and it's an experience. You know, Disney has an experience. Universal has an experience. It's not just a product they're selling. They're selling memories. They're selling the tactile feel, the packaging and the product, the interface. All of these things are very important um, to the consumer uh, to get a relationship and a history with their product so they continue being a customer. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if we look at the outside of the box, Huh. Not super exciting. Designed in Taiwan, assembled in China. It's got a designation number right there. And it looks like some little icons on the side. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. Oh, and a third, a third box. It's a box inside of a box inside of a box. Okay, so now we're getting to the good stuff. So obviously this is the outside box right here. And we get to the actual tablet box. Ooh, so pretty. Like the artwork, very nice. Cardboard is good, it's not thin. Got some stuff on the back side here that gives some information. So it looks like um, 5080 LPI resolution, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, and it's battery free, so it's uh, very similar to your Wacom and your industry standard, which is good. It's got eight customizable press keys, 60% tilt, which is awesome. 
a 10 millimeter sensing height so whenever the pen comes within 10 millimeters of the screen it will sense the pen and activate the uh, pen itself um, the drawing experience then it's got 12 inch diagonal workspace so it's a 12 inch tablet it is not a display tablet so it's pen the things that come in the box will be your pen tablet the cable the quick start guide the digital pen it's got uh, a pen nib clip I believe for removing and also the pen nibs and here's again some of those writing specifications and the system requirements having uh, needing Windows 7 or later and Mac OS 10.12 or later so the name of the company again is Artist Soul you can see it right there and this particular model is the Artist Soul A1201 pen table they're calling it a pen table I believe but it is indeed a tablet something that will stand to the right or to the left of your main host machine so you'll plug this in um, via the type c cable that is included uh, i'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description so you guys can visit the amazon website uh, link that this particular item is located at so before i get into anything that i will do on the machine drawing because we are going to do a um, a drawing demo I'm always very particular on drawing demos because I want to make sure and go at this from a uh, from a base of not just doing a pen diagonal test or horizontal or vertical I want to actually use it what it's designed for I like this it says fuel for the creative fire man I love that okay so we're gonna go ahead and open this in his back. Okay, comes in a looks like a magnetic or static sleeve. Let's go and put this aside really quick. And of course, the inside. Oh, awesome. So, here is the cable. Again, I'm really keen on certain aspects of product design, especially whenever it comes to little peripheral cables. So, the cable is not cheap. It's very well made, molded, injected plastic. It's got the USB and of course the Type-C interface at a 90 degrees. And in, as indicated, it's got the uh, pin nib remover with extra nibs. It's not designed particular um, to you know sit on your desk. It's one of those items that you'd use once or twice. You put it in a safe place and then um, you would access it whenever you need it. So we're going to put those to the side. Here is what looks like something if you don't have a charge. So I believe this would go in here and then this would go into your power brick and then that would go into the power source. So it doesn't have a power cable per se, um, but uh, it does have, uh, you know, just to plug into that peripheral if your machine only has USB-C, which is what's going to happen uh, today because my current machine, my Surface uh, Laptop Studio, um, only has USB-C. And here's the pen. Let's go ahead and open the pen and look at it. In a plastic baggie, that sounds right there. Oh, have mercy. Okay, so the pen, it's got good weight to it. It's got, you can see the mold lines. Okay, which is not ideal, you know, whenever you start seeing these little mold lines that it is, you know, taken out of the uh, injection mold. It does give it a little bit of a sense of uh, cheaper feel, but this is a budget tablet. You're not looking at hundreds of dollars for this particular tablet. I like the grip. I like the shape. I like the, uh, I like the shape of this. Typically, I like it to taper a little bit more because whenever you're drawing a lot of times with that tilt, if you tilt it, it's going to end up hitting this particular area right here which is again not ideal but I do like how big this is and it's got a, like a little spring and it's got looks like a two button uh, pin so that's really nice and the and the rubber doesn't feel real clammy and sticky which again is a bonus so let's open this okay let's get rid of the box boom, boom. okay so here is oh this is nice gets you a little sleeve that you can place I believe your pin in that's pretty big for a pin sleeve 
quite large. It looks like it's made of felt, nice quality. They have a uh, woven label. Um, it is crooked, if you look, so it's not straight. You know, it would be nice if they just, you know, would have had that a little bit better. But I understand. Again, budget-minded, done with Velcro. And you can use this for pencils. So if I have maybe a pencil and I want to stick that in here, so they give you kind of a, a place to store your pen, or you can put pencils in it. Personally, uh, I would probably just put pencils and stuff in there. Um, and then eventually, if I went traveling with the tablet, I would probably put it in there and be safe. So in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side because we're not gonna utilize it currently. And of course, here is the user guide. The limited warranty, art is soul. So art is soul, I guess that's how you say it, art is soul. So very cool, I love that. Gives context to their branding. Not seeing a lot of color. I like color whenever I do, you know, open stuff and I like to see pictures and whatnot. It's very black and white, but you know, it goes along with what I've already experienced with their packaging and it's, the aesthetic is is uh, utilitarian, which is okay and I'm fine with that. Here's a quick start guide. So. Typically, um, it gives it in English and some of the other, you know, your, your French, English, um, and it looks like Russian, uh, and then you have Polish, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, uh, it looks like Japanese uh, and Chinese. So, pretty cool. So let's go ahead to the front, quick start guide. All right, product overview, it gives you an indication. The type is quite small, not very easy to read, especially for, a, um, a more seasoned veteran like myself, so I have to literally, <laughs> I've got my glasses on, and which is fine, and you know, it looks like it's very easy. So, I mean, literally it's one, two for English, one, two for Russian, and so on and so forth. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get to the tablet. Working area <clears throat> looks like uh, around 12 inches diagonal. It's got quick keys, express keys. There's an indicator showing power. It's got branding um, and there's a the backside. So let's go ahead and look at the item itself. Okay, let's put our pin to the left-hand side. And obviously here is the star of the show. You've got this anti-static bag with an adhesive. So I've already undone the adhesive. Let's go ahead and take the unit out. Wow, so here's the backside of it. You have, uh, engraved or debossed um, logo with uh, name Artisol and rubber pads, which I love. Fit and finish is, I'd say, A+. plus. Very nice. Nice weight to it. Doesn't feel cheap at all, and I know what cheap feels like. Okay, again, we have the or debossed logo right here with the name, and we've got the quick keys on the left-hand side. I don't know how thick this is, but it doesn't, I mean, it's probably, I'd say, I don't know what the weight is. I'd have to look at the actual quick start guide to see what the weight of it is, but that doesn't really matter to me. It is quite, uh, quite light and it doesn't have that bendy junk feel to it. It feels really good. Okay. Here's the information over here on the right hand side for, um, governmental regulation that shows the model, the name and all of those other things, um, power, you know, all the things that I, it's not that I don't care about them, but that's what they have to put on there whenever you manufacture a product. So like if I were to have it here, and it is quite large, I mean, it's nice large and it's very smooth, but it does have slight, a slight uh, texture to it. I mean, ever so slight. So even having my hand on here with the pen, this is an experience that I've had numerous times, very good quality. The buttons don't have a rubbery feel. It's got nice, uh, nice tactile feel, not overly uh, bouncy, no spring. It's just got the standard button. And of course you have the power indicator there on the left-hand side. I'm gonna be anxious to see what these are. There's F1, F2, F3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. They give an indication, possibly mirroring what you would have on a keyboard of your PC. So go up there and, and then we're gonna see how those function and uh, see exactly how they work. Again, I'm very impressed with the quality. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing and I'm anxious to get the driver downloaded um, and get drawing on this very nice tablet. 
So let's go ahead and download everything onto the PC and get started. Okay, and here is what I was talking about on Amazon. So I put in Artisol, and lo and behold, comes the A1201 12-inch graphic tablet. Um, drawing tablet. Uh, this is the tablet that we'll be reviewing today. As you go through, it explains exactly. <laughs> this is always fun. Greatly, greatly improves efficiency, which it does. Eight plus sixteen customizable shortcut keys. Um, why don't you just say twenty-four? Eight plus sixteen. Yeah, I got to do math. Uh, so it shows up to four hundred um, pressure sensitivity levels. I'm not really sure because it has eight one thousand. 8,192 levels, and then 400 PPS. Okay. What's really cool about this particular device, too, is unfortunately I do not own a uh, Android, um, so I can't really show you that particular feature, but based upon what I see, it plugs directly into an Android phone, and you can see the, um, the area that you can utilize for the Android phone if you were to plug that in. And then, of course, it shows it plugged into a phone, drawing in that area that it just specified, and then of course if you plug it into a Mac or a PC, you can utilize the entire area uh, of the drawing tablet. And of course, Type-C interface, and it's got a pen tray that you can put the pin in if it's on a flat surface, so on and so forth. And what's really great, I want you to look right now Typically, it retails for 70 bucks, which in my opinion, based upon what I see so far, I haven't drawn on it yet, based upon what I've seen so far is a bargain. And then you get down and they've got 30% off right now on the store. I'm sure that might change and prime free shipping if you have that uh, option for your Amazon, um, you know, your Amazon. So it does Windows, Mac OS, Chromebook, and Android. And currently right now it's 49 bucks, 1.3 pounds. So that's not too bad. And if you want to get a little bit more information on what it can do and what programs it's compatible with, your Photoshop, your Painter, Illustrator, Clip Studio, Krita, Coral Painter, Manga Studio, which is also <clears throat> Clip Studio Paint. This has been easy to use for beginners, teens, and artists. Um, going towards that younger demographic. It's used in animating, game, signature online teaching, and remote work. And it shows that it does have tilt, so on and so forth, that gives you all of those uh, all of those indications that indeed um, it is a quality item. So I'm gonna put this link, literally link to this product. I don't receive anything from this product at all. I just wanted you to have the opportunity to read this information for yourself if you're interested in purchasing this particular tablet. Okay, so I've installed the tablet itself. We're gonna to get to the driver here in a second. Uh, very easy to do. I had to utilize, as you see on the left-hand side, since this is a Surface, one of the, uh, the latest and greatest Surface laptop studio. I've got it angled up so I can draw uh, at an angle because that's the way I like it. And easy plug-in, so USB-C interface here. And I did use the little dongle that they provide uh, in the packaging to go ahead and plug into the USB-C port on the side. And you see the power indicator, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and go to the driver install. So I went to um, the Artisol website and uh, go to downloads and it shows uh, exactly what I needed to uh, download. So currently on here, uh, it looks the top downloads uh, are this particular tablet that I have and the 16 Pro, which would be awesome. Okay, so right now, so what's cool too is whenever I first plugged it in, and this isn't true on all tablets, whenever I first plugged it in, it does act as a mouse, which is really cool. So uh, it might not have pressure sensitivity when you first plug it in, that's why obviously you have to download the driver, but just from experience, I know that some other tablets, you cannot use the tablet unless you have the driver installed. Um, and this is not one of them, so that's really cool. So it has the manual, so it uh, has already indicated uh, Windows, so let's go ahead and download that particular driver. And it's about, let's see how many megabytes, 47 megabytes for the driver. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the file. Artisol, verify publisher, yes, we're gonna install the driver. I know this is boring, but for some people, this is a chore. 
this is something they're not used to, this is something that is difficult for them, and this is gonna basically walk them through the process. So agree and join user experience improvement program. I don't have a problem with that. Before installing the driver, please read the user experience improvement. Quit all drawing programs, good. Confirm. And it is installing. Successfully installed. Start now. Okay, very similar to some of the other interfaces that I have. So it shows, which looks like, let's see here. You guys can't see that that well. Let's go ahead and see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Uh, I think that's the best we're gonna do. Okay, so <clears throat> express keys. I can program the express keys. Let's see, let's go ahead and through, go through here. Okay, so I can program the express keys, which we're not gonna do right now. Here's the pen interface that I can adjust the pressure sensitivity, pen pressure. I guess down would be harder pen pressure, output would be more output. I can disable nib, I can able, enable Windows Ink, which I definitely want on a PC, and I can just make it as a mouse if you don't want to have any kind of pressure sensitivity at all. Looks like you can back up your settings, which is really nice, so you export and then you can back up the settings as a specific file in case you want to take the tablet out and go to another computer. You can basically go back and you'll have this particular interface with those settings, which is really cool. And if you wanna export, you can drag that file to another computer, install the driver, and you can basically keep working as designated because nothing's more frustrating than setting up all your quick keys, getting them perfect, and then having to go to another computer. This alleviates that uh, variable, okay? Store. Oh, they've got a little store link in here, so it links to their store. If you want to update or upgrade to maybe one of their display tablets, you can... Okay, do not show. Okay, so obviously if we wanted to shop, we can do that, but we're not doing that right now. So let's go ahead and quit that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get drawing. The first thing I'm going to do is just some simple, simple sketches. Okay? Let's go ahead and we're gonna launch one of my favorite programs, <clears throat> which is a program called uh, Sketchbook Pro. Okay. Okay, so currently the pressure is not working inside of Sketchbook Pro. So let's go ahead and no, we're gonna restart. So what is, um, particular about PCs and Macs alike, a lot of times after you install the driver, you basically have to do a, re a complete restart so the driver has an opportunity to install itself into the drawing programs, and that's exactly what happened. So I've restarted the computer, and now I have wonderful pressure sensitivity. Look at that. Oh, man. Extremely light. Look at that. So we're going to we're gonna go in, and we're going to look at how light. Look at the just the... I doubt you can even see any of that. I'm barely pressing. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take the pen and we're gonna put it, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the camera just slightly so you can see me drawing on the tablet. Just slightly. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Just so you see context. You have a little context of what's actually going on. Okay. Oops. Notification manager. Okay. And what's cool too is these quick keys on the left hand side are pre programmed. So, so you can hear me clicking. I'm on the left hand side here. Some of them already are pre programmed, which is great. So go ahead and zoom in. And the pressure curve is absolutely phenomenal. Pin feels really good. I can take the pin and I'm just going to go ahead and barely place it on the screen and barely press, and I'm getting such a good pressure curve. I don't even think some of the other tablets that I've utilized is that good. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we're just gonna do a really quick sketch of a skull in profile. Um, so, what is gonna make you purchase this product? Obviously, price point is gonna be one of the biggest factors. 
because let's be honest, money these days, especially in the economy here in the United States, for you guys that are watching this that are overseas that aren't really having any economy issues, the economy in the United States is going through transition because, you know, recovering from COVID and some of those other things that have happened in the world, uh, you know, from the conflict uh, overseas to some of those other elements, as well as the administration and past administrations, and I'm sure future administrations will have a say in how the economy uh, evolves. But, you know, $48 for this item being 30% off regularly 70, even $70 for this item so far, based upon what I see, is gonna be a really good buy um, overall. You know, I'm always one of those guys that looks at something very plainly. I see, you know, that it definitely does exactly what it says it does. Now, longevity being what it is, you want something to last more than six months. You want it to last uh, a duration, possibly, you know, years. Uh, I remember some of my old Wacom products that I utilized uh, in work. I mean, I had a, a Wacom Intuos tablet that I used for close to six years until I, you know, transitioned over to one of their drawing uh, tablets, their display tablets. And, you know, you want something like this to last. The only thing that I had trouble with whenever I used those Intuos tablets um, would be the nib wearing a hole in the plastic covering. Now, I'm not sure if um, if Artisol offers replacement uh, covers uh, for the tablet or at that price point, you know, if they charge, you know, $5, seven time, or $7 or $10 or $15, $20 for the cover, they it, it probably behooves you to just buy another tablet altogether. You know, we live in that throwaway uh, world uh, these days. That basically, you know, why would I waste my time on fixing something when I can just buy something for just a little bit more? And that, unfortunately, is you know how things are run <laughs> these days. Um, so yeah, this is so far so good. I don't do a lot of drawing on the uh, tablets like this. I'm more of a display tablet guy because you know that's what I transitioned to uh, about 13 years ago. But previous to that, the only thing that I worked on was a uh, was a tablet like this that needed a host computer um, and you know there is a learning curve let's be honest there's always a learning curve with anything that you get so if you buy this tablet just know it takes about two weeks to learn that disconnect so usually whenever we, we write and we draw we have it right on the screen now it is challenging I'll be honest with you to look at something and then to have your hand down here and then to be doing this so that communication can sometimes throw people off, but if you stick with it, this is one of the best ways that, you know, for you to get into digital art. And at 30, and at what, $48? It's, gosh, you really, you can't go wrong with, you know, this particular kind of tablet. They're, they're very durable. And, you know, so far, uh, this particular tablet is fantastic. So what I'm going to do, this was literally just a sketch to show you that, you know, it doesn't take long at all to get up and running and start it. So let's go ahead and go down. I'm just having a little bit of fun, <laughs> you guys. Uh, he's not going to be a full skull. He's going to be like a zombie man. So let's go ahead and give him. I thought, man, that pressure curve is so good. It has uh, what I call bre uh, a break-in, a really harsh break-in moment. Like it'll be, you'll draw and then it'll be like this. And then this, whenever you start barely pressing. If you have issues like this, then obviously the pressure curve is messed up. But honestly, watch. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna draw really soft, draw harder, 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 hardest, hardest. Lighter, 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 and lightest. Now I did see a lot of this, like you'll see like right here. Here, we'll zoom in if I can, but it'll let me. There we go. That's, so right here, right here, and right here. That's probably because my hand was jerking a little bit. But whenever we get to like right here and I'm trying to let off, right there. So that final let off, you go from super hard 
to let off. So what I'm seeing is a drop off, just a slight drop off, but at the end of the day, what you're gonna notice is, is the fact that it has a really good pressure curve. And I think, you know, you gotta remember something here. We're dealing with a price point that is very hard to make money at. And I say that because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a product designer and I understand how, you know, injection molding is and, and how expensive things are. And then you add the tech to it and then, you know, you have to make 30% margin, 40% margin, 50% margin just to be able to operate. So these are the, what are, what are known as bread and butter. So bread and butter products, you know, are ones that, that basically pay the bills. These 12 inch tablets, the 16 inch, the 15 inch, all these tablets these companies make that are lower on the price point ladder definitely are, they need to be good and they need to be durable, but also they need to make sense financially. And hopefully, um, you know, Artisol is, is making some bank with this particular product. So let's go ahead and scale up that brush so you can see just the nuance the nuance, that's what I'm looking for. Anybody can do this. I mean, I could do that without, you know, even thinking. I want nuance, I want ease of brush. I wanna be able to do really subtle and soft shadows. Well, we might go ahead and keep on this sketch. I'm having a little bit of fun, you know? Let's go ahead and do a little simple shadow here. What's really nice too, is I typically use a quick key device, something like this. This is manufactured by XP Pen. And this is great because they sell this as a solo item. I'm not sure if Artisol has a quick key device. And you know, even though I use this primarily because I've got that driver uh, programmed and I can, I can program these quick keys and I know this, what's great about the Artisol product is it's got it built in and I don't have to buy that extra peripheral. And that's fantastic. I can pre-program these keys on the left-hand side and I can have a quick key remote right there and I don't have to deal with that extra peripheral um, item plugging up one of my uh, USB ports on the side. So since I don't have it programmed currently, <laughs> you're gonna see me go and, and kind of rudimentarily do some things with uh, you know the, the tab keys up here your undos and your whatnots and so on and so forth. So let's put some shadowing in here. Okay, let's see, oh, okay. So I press the, the key right here. It brings up a sub menu. So obviously it already has some of those items pre-programmed in, which is cool. Let's see here. Okay, so here's the brush increase and decrease, and I can program these how I want to pretty easily. I'm looking for the eyedropper key. So let's go ahead and make this smaller, a little bit smaller. Okay, a little bit bigger. Go ahead and change the color. This is um, this program that I'm utilizing. It is Sketchbook Pro, and it's been around a long time. It's really good for just sketching and drawing and just doing simple, uh, simple items. So let's go ahead, what I'm gonna do is, since I've got the sketch base pretty decent, whoops, let's go back. I'm gonna go ahead, and I don't see really any false positives. I think this was probably my mistake right there. That's no big deal. Let's go ahead and just shadow these in. Nice. Increase. Let's increase to really big. Whoops. Nice lead in, good contact. Distance wise, I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going in. Right there. So probably about that far, roughly, it, it activates, which is really cool. Go ahead and make this smaller. Put a little texture in there, just for giggles. Yeah, let's go back, that's a little bit too much texture. Make it smaller, 
I'm gonna adjust the opacity down a little bit. Give that skull some texture items right there. That's nice. Yeah, like I said, the uh, the pressure curve is very nice, and I can adjust that if I wanted to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go File. Okay, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come right here to some of these items right here. Okay. Block F4. So these are probably whenever I'm in Windows. I'm in a drawing program right now, so I'm not gonna utilize those. So file, save as, and we're just gonna save it to the desktop really quick. And we're gonna say, we're gonna make it a PSD file. PSD, uh, Spaceman Doodle, nope, we're not gonna do that. And we're gonna do that, and we're gonna go Sculpt, S-K-U-L-L, -L. and one. Whoops, go Q, and A, one, two, three, Sculpt one. Okay, so we're gonna save that to the desktop. Good, we're gonna go ahead and quit that, and we're gonna go into Photoshop. Okay, we're gonna zoom in a little bit further on the screen, so you can see what I'm doing here. File, open, and we're gonna go desktop, and we're gonna go down to skull, the one that we were just working on. Okay, all right, we're gonna add a layer, edit, fill, and we're gonna go white just so we keep it easy. We're gonna go image, image size. We're at 300 DPI at eight inches wide by four and a half inches high. Hit cancel. Okay, now we're going to see, okay, so that is, now we're gonna go through the pre-program quick keys on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and zoom out just slightly so you guys can see. Okay, so again, that increases, these two buttons increase and decrease brush size. Let's go ahead and change the color down to black. We're gonna add a layer on top. Okay. That is eraser, top button eraser. That's gonna move the item. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in just slightly and we're gonna go back in further a little bit so you can see the drawing itself good okay so we're gonna decrease brush size make sure that everything oh man yeah oh, that's good <laughs> so right now I don't have uh, any quick keys program to um, uh, undo so I'm just gonna leave that there really quick. So let's go top button, we can erase that. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. That particular button brings up the brush palette. Okay, and that that's nice, this button already pre-programmed brings up the eraser. So that's really cool. So they actually did put some forethought into pre-programming some of those uh, quick keys. Okay. Zoom in, okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of drawing on him. Oh, that pressure curve is so good, guys. I can't even. Okay, what I like to do is so we have uh, pressure on and taper on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the brush modification palette. We're gonna go down to texture and we're going to pull some of that harsh texture off of there so it's not so harsh and the depth of it. So we can do a simple test. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Right. 
lady's had some tooth work in the past. And I'm going over and... So as you see, very quickly I'm able to put down some line and at a very reasonable price point at 48 bucks, guys, come on. You know, now I did receive this item for evaluation. I did not pay for this item, so understand that even though I did not pay for this item, I'm very hard <laughs> to please, especially when it comes to drawing products. I don't just let, you know, let things fly that aren't good, and I would not give you a recommendation if it wasn't sincere. Um, for the price point, I mean, you guys, it's hard to beat, you know? Pressure curve's good. It does what it says it's going to do. The installation of the driver was fantastic. Let's go ahead and give... Uh, yeah. His skull cap was removed at one time. Since indeed we do have, believe it or not, here in the States, we've already started to see some Halloween stuff appear, and it's not even July. Actually, it is July. It's not even August. That's hard to believe, right? So maybe he's... favorite brushes. This is very similar to the other brush that I just had. Um, Loesch. Loesch. Soft shade. Oh, I love soft shade so much. Let's make that brush a little bit smaller. Erase that out. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Take the taper off. Yeah, then I can just start shading here and there. Again, pressure curve really good in Photoshop, excellent. So the two programs that we've examined so far that this particular tablet works great in is gonna be Photoshop and Sketchbook Pro. I'm sure that it works good in the other programs. Here, give me a second and we'll transfer over to Clip Studio Paint for those of you who utilize that program. Okay. Okay. So let's zoom out. File. Save. Okay. And finally, we'll go into Clip Studio Paint, which is also Manga Studio over in um, in Asia and in Japan and China and, and those areas. So file open. Desktop. Let's see here. Yeah, Skull. Open. Okay. Here's what we applied in Photoshop. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's go ahead and look at the quick keys. So first, same quick key that was programmed in Photoshop and uh, uh, Sketchbook Pro is working in Mega Studio. Here's the... Let's go really good pressure curve. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. We're gonna add a layer. Add a layer, raster layer, yes. We're going to change the color. Come over here to the left hand side. I haven't had any hiccups at all, none. And that's really rare. Um, Let's go ahead and see if that's yep, and that's the brush. And here's the it's the same quick keys in Clip Studio Paint as it is for Photoshop. And this particular brush right here. Now, Clip Studio Paint has a great rendering engine. The challenge that I see with Clip Studio Paint occasionally has to do with what brush you have. So typically um, I will utilize opaque watercolor. A transparent watercolor is great if you're working on a color and you want to change the hue value, uh, or not the hue value, but the hue um, color, and well, hue is color, 
change the color and you want to change the tint so you can tint a red maybe with a little bit of green and the transparent watercolor works really good with that so we're going to get rid of that now we have opaque watercolor which again the pressure curve on the tablet is fantastic uh, it is a little heavy for my taste and what's really cool is so i come down here to the driver i look there's the artist soul i can pull up the interface I can go ahead and uh, pin pressure is a little bit harder, a little bit less. Okay, and there the pressure curve has been adjusted. It's that easy. I love it. Now we're going to make him green. Let's go ahead and add a layer. We're going to change the colors. Double clicks. I'm going to make him like a bluish green color blue green okay we're going to increase the brush size quite large okay yeah and i'll show you what i was talking about as far as transparent color and and putting a different tint here, I'll show you here in just a moment after I get the chin blobbed in. And what's really cool too is they've got these, these keys on the left hand side. We're going to go ahead and zoom out. Zoom out just a little bit. So these keys on the left hand side that are different colors. So in my peripheral vision, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. I know that this key down here down there is a different color so that automatically designates it as being the move and I can see it out of the corner of my eye just barely okay so now we're gonna stay on this layer we're gonna zoom back in we're gonna stay on this layer and I'm gonna change the color tint just slightly and we're gonna go a little bit greener a bit greener and now I'm going to go to switch to transparent watercolor if I can transparent watercolor and you see now it changes that tint ever so slightly and with that pressure curve the blending is wonderful I'm going to zoom in again I don't have that pre-programmed in to zoom in and out which is something you can do Having the green is fantastic. Okay. Just got a little bit of green. We're gonna change a little bit to the reds. Maybe a little bit of the pink. It's gonna be good. And you can see that pink on top of that green layer gives it that little bit of a purple hue. Make the brush a little bit smaller. Transparent watercolor, what a wonderful thing inside of Clip Studio Paint. And make its brush bigger. You can blend it really nice. Just a great. I'm going to go a little bit redder. Okay, change the brush size. And I'm acclimating very quickly to those quick keys, utilizing the features that come with it. I don't have to have an extra peripheral. I'm going to go gray. Right there. We're going to change our brush back to opaque. And very good. And finally the pièce de résistance. We're going to make it look like a yellow. He's got some yellow teeth. And we're going to sample. And we're going to make it a little bit lighter right up here. And then we're going to add a layer on the right hand side. And we're going to change the layer transparency mode to glow, add glow. Whoops. 
right up here is going to be a little bit greener. There we go. And we don't want it to be that. We want it to be a brush. Okay. Maybe right up here. Simple highlights. Now what's nice is since it is on its own layer and that layer transparency I can I'm going to show you here in a second. I'm doing it really harsh currently just so I can see where it is. Obviously I'd maybe do something a little bit different if you aren't here on my shoulder. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, good. So on and so forth. Good, good. It's fine. And one of my students used to say, what's wrong with you, man? You just go, you're like, good, good, all right, we're done. No, just if you watch, there's little nuances, especially whenever it comes to workflow that you can, you can adopt. You know, a little bit better, a little bit better here and there. Okay, so now we're gonna zoom out. And I can adjust the, harshness because I have it on its own layer. Okay. And a little bit, a little bit lighter right here. A little right there. So we got that highlight right there. And we're gonna go final red. I can't I can't resist. <laughs> okay. Keys are working great. Everything works really good. I gotta be honest, I'm 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 hyper impressed. You guys, you know that I don't get impressed that often. Maybe some red. Okay, it's on the total air. Maybe he's been munching on some humans. And then of course, we'll put a simple little background. The opposite of green is gonna be red, so we're gonna make it more or less that color right there. We're gonna increase the brush size really big. Whoops. That's not a circle. Okay. Make that a little bit yellow, kind of a greenish yellow maybe. Decrease brush size. Yeah, very nice. A little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. And then to add a little bit of We'll go add glow, and we'll go here. And then we'll change, there we go. And that's pretty much where I wanted to land. Again, the Artisol 12 inch tablet. What a fun demonstration this was using the Artisol A1201 12-inch uh, drawing tablet. This is one of those, again, one of those products that is hiding. It's hiding. It's hiding in plain sight. Whenever we go and we look for tablets online, a lot of times we want, we want the best. That's what we want. And we don't care how much it costs until we go and search and see that some of the higher-end tablets are so expensive. It's mind-boggling of how expensive they really are. You know, some of the higher-end uh, tablets, 800000 2000 3000 4000 dollars for the display tablets, and you're thinking to yourself, I will never be able to create digital art unless I have something of that caliber. That is a lie. That is a complete and utter false lie. This tablet at $48, discounted from $70, currently on Amazon, is one of those products that you can get into digital art for basically the price of, you know, of, uh, going out, you know, if you're going out with your boyfriend or girlfriend or your husband or wife, you know, it's it's 48 bucks. It's basically 50 bucks. And that has the potential to move you from where you are to where you want to be artistically. If you've never done digital art, this is a very low entry point, financially speaking, that has a super high return um, 
technology and aesthetic and uh, functionality. You know, you want something that has high return. Whenever you purchase a tablet for three, four, five hundred dollars, it, it kind of pushes you in that direction of I need to use this tablet because I paid X amount of dollars for it. And that's the truth. And it'll frustrate you. This tablet, you get into the market, or no, you get into the, uh, you get your foot, feet wet, you get into the digital world, and you start drawing and experiencing, and you don't have a huge amount of output in terms of money. Because money, let's be honest, is a really big motivator whenever it comes to, uh, to experiencing digital art. Programs, you know, then you're like, well, I don't have the money for Photoshop. That that's all well and good, and they do have different subscription and tier models that you can subscribe. And if you don't want to spend a ton of money, then there's uh, programs like Krita, um, you know, and GIMP, and some of those Photoshop emulators. And Sketchbook Pro, you can find Sketchbook Pro. I found it for free. It doesn't exist for free anymore. <laughs> um, if you want it to be updated, but the last version I think was like 8.6. You can still find that for free. Uh, but there are programs out there that you can utilize and, and do digital art. And this, again, this Art of Soul 12 inch tablet is a great entryway into that world. So that's what I had for you guys today. Hopefully you didn't leave. Hopefully you didn't get too bored. This again is a tablet review. It was not meant as a teaching tool, but merely a dip into another company's foray into the tablet genre, which is super saturated, which I love. I love having these companies compete with each other because they, they create such great products at low price points because they're trying to get those dollars in, you know, to keep perpetuating their business model. So that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you like and subscribe and share, and we'll see you next time, okay? Bye.